So we're carrying on with our annotation of a Christmas carol, and you should be on page 20, um, which is the ghost of Christmas past. Um, we've just been to, or the ghost of Christmas past has just taken Scrooge to um, Fezziwigs, and we're at this point here where Scrooge is reflecting then on um, his relationship with Bob Cratchit, his clerk, um, and again sort of reflecting, but not really realising yet um, that he can um, actually change and make a difference. So let's carry on reading from here um, and see how far we get. His former self turned down the lamps as he gave utterance to the wish and Scrooge and the ghost again stood side by side as, um, in the open air. My time grows short, observed the spirit. Quick. This was not addressed to Scrooge or to anyone whom he could see, but it produced an immediate effect. For again Scrooge saw himself. He was older now, a man in the prime of life. His face had not the harsh and rigid lines of later years, but it had begun to wear signs of care and avarice. There was an eager, greedy, restless motion in his eye, which shows the passion had taken root and by the shadow of the growing tree would fall. Um, so let's just pick out this bit here um, and also this bit here. My time goes short, observe the spirit quick. We've got a sense of time um, running out. And this is about kind to um, sort of encouraging Scrooge to change. Okay, so he wants to encourage Scrooge to change. Scrooge is starting to reflect on realizing that he's maybe, you know, could have done things differently. Um, but the spirit is trying to give this sense of, well, now you need to do something about that. And um, you haven't got forever just to kind of um, keep reflecting on, on the past. You, you need to now do something about it in the future. And we're moving to um, a new um, vignette. Remember, that means like a little snapshot, a new um, memory of Scrooge's. Um, we can see that he's older now, and it says there was an eager, greedy, restless motion in his eye, okay? So um, he's lost this kind of youthfulness um, and the greed um, and the sort of desperation for money um, is setting in. Um, and he describes it as a, like a passion for money. Um, where the shadow of the growing tree would fall. So we've almost got this um, um, metaphor here of this kind of um, the sort of evil of money growing inside him. It's it's taken root. Okay, so we can also draw a line here because this is the new memory. All right, um, and this is the bit with his fiance. So if you want to write there. Beyonce, then you can. All right, so we know that that's what this memory is. He was not alone, but sat by the side of a fair young girl in a morning dress, in whose eyes there were tears which sparkled in the light that shone out of the ghost of Christmas past. It matters little, she said softly, to you, very little. Another idol has displaced me, and if it can cheer and comfort you in time to come, as I would have tried to do, I have no just cause to grieve. So she says an idol has displaced me. If you idolise something, you worship something. So his idol, as we know, is money. So he worships money. And she says it's displaced her. It's basically pushed her out. Or replaced her in some way. So that's a really important quotation there. Another idol has displaced me because he's now choosing money um, over meaningful kind of connection with people and, and meaningful relationships. So he responds, what idol has displaced you? And she says, a golden one. So again, that kind of a golden one is a kind of metaphor for money. This is even handed dealing of the world, he said. There is no, nothing on which it is so hard as poverty, and there is nothing it professes to condemn with such severity as the pursuit of wealth. You fear the world too much, she answered gently. All your other hopes have merged into the hope of being the chance of its sordid reproach. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. Have I not? 
So there's quite a few things that she's saying here. She says his master passion, the thing that he's um, most um, focused on is gain, getting more, greed. It's the main thing in his life, that's his main focus. So she's basically saying he doesn't care about anything else. She's saying that he was more noble, he had the kind of better qualities. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one. Um, so his good qualities are disappearing. So he wasn't always this way. Let me move this up so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so his good qualities are disappearing and he's now just got this sort of one singular focus. And um, that's kind of a good word, let's note that down. Singular or single focus. Um, and he basically says there is nothing uh, which is so hard as poverty. So he, he's doing this. She said it's out, out of fear of being poor um, that he's doing this. But actually, um, he's ended up becoming sort of so selfish and so driven in this desperation not to be poor. OK, let's move up to page 21. Our contract is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so, until in good season we can improve our worldly fortune by our patient industry. So actually they were both poor but happy. Content means happy. He didn't want for, um, for much. So this is what they used to be like. So even Scrooge himself um, was poor but happy. Um, and not poor like sort of um, necessarily like uh, the Cratchit poor, but, but um, poorer than obviously he is at the beginning. Um, and they were just going to patiently kind of work hard. You are changed. When it was made, you were another man. I was a boy, he said impatiently. Your own feeling tells you that you are, were not what you are, she returned. I am. That which promised happiness when we were one in heart is fraught with misery now that we are two. How often and how keenly have I thought this, I will not say. It is enough that I have thought it and can release you. Have I ever sought release? In words? No, never. In what then? In a changed nature, in an altered spirit, in another atmosphere of life, another hope as its great end, in everything that made my love any worth or value in your sight. If this has been between us, said the girl, looking mildly but with steadiness upon him, tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now? Ah, oh, no. So she's basically saying that, you know, um, these, these words, again, that we think about, um, associate that link with money, remember words that kind of fit into a particular topic, we can call that the semantic field of money. So we think of things of worth and value, um, but really what she's talking about is love having a worth and value. And we know for Scrooge, things that have worth and value are, are things that have a, a monetary value. Um, and basically what she's saying here is, you know, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be with me now um, because uh, we've got very different priorities in life. He seemed to yield to the justice of this supposition in spite of himself, but he said with a struggle, you think not. I would gladly think otherwise if I could, she answered. Heaven knows. When I have learned a truth like this, I know how strong and irresistible it must be. But if you were free today, tomorrow, yesterday, can even I believe that you would choose a dowerless girl? Now, um, historically, um, the parents, the father would have um, given money um, um, to the, the person, the man that, that his daughter was going to marry. Um, and sort of the more they could pay, the more then, you know, the, the richer the family, the more they would pay and the more kind of then attractive that girl would be. Um, because as well as getting a wife, the man gets a lot of money. But um, she's obviously from a poor family, um, so her father wasn't able to give any money. You who are in your very confidence with her weigh everything by gain, or choosing her if for a moment you were false enough to your one guiding principle to do so, do I not know that your repentance and regret would surely follow? 
I do, and I release you with a full heart for the love of him you once were. So she's um, doing this out of um, her love for him, she says, that she's, she's going to release him. Um, and the reason she's going to do that is because she says that he weighs everything uh, by gain. Uh, he only cares now about what he will get. Um, and she really is admitting that you know she's 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 poor. She's from a poor family. So this is important because it's a reminder that Scrooge used to be do it and um, used to be different. So if we put in here, Belle was poor, but Scrooge loved her. Um, and so we can just put shows he was different in the past. So she says that she will release him. He was about to speak, but with her head turned from him, she resumed. You may, the memory of what is uh, past half makes me hope you will, have pain in this. A very, very brief time, and you will dismiss the recollection of it gladly as an unprofitable dream, from which it, hap um, it happened well that you awoke. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. Um, so again, she's just um, saying to him, that actually, she hopes that this will hurt him, like, because he did care about her in the past. If it doesn't hurt him, then obviously that's upsetting for her because it says that he doesn't really care about him anymore. Um, and that, you know, he'll he'll sort of just think of it as a dream. He'll sort of forget about it. Um, and she says, well, if this is what you've chosen, then you can be happy with it. She left him and they parted. So that is the end um, of that memory, that vignette with Belle. And now Scrooge turns back to the spirit. Spirit, said Scrooge, show me no more. Conduct me home. Why do you delight to torture me? Um, so we've got these imperatives coming in again. Um, show, conduct. Um, showing that he's kind of being very demanding. Um, but also that he's desperate to get away. These are upsetting him. But he's also still being very selfish, which we can see from these um, personal pronouns. Show me no more. Conduct me home. Why do you delight to torture me? Um, the focus is very much on him um, himself. So you can put selfish. Um, and he obviously finds these um, memories painful. He feels like the ghost is torturing him um, by showing him these. So um, we've also got, I guess, these short sentences that are, are, are showing that he's this sort of sense of desperation as well to get away. So we can add that as well, plus short sentences um, and the exclamation marks and all of that. Um, but he's not really um, reflecting on this. One shadow more, exclaimed the ghost. No more, no more. I don't wish to see it. Show me no more. So again, there we've got um, all these uh, short sentences as well, all through this bit. Uh, giving us a sense of his um, sort of desperation to get away and the, the painfulness of this experience. But the relentless ghost pinioned him in both his arms and forced him to observe what happened next. So... The relentless ghost means he's not going to give up. He pinioned him. He literally sort of um, held him in his arms and forced him to observe um, what happened next. Um, so we've got this adjective um, relentless and the verb pinioned and forced and um, telling us about the strength of the ghost. Um, and look at that the ghost is determined, actually. Um, he's not going to give up on Scrooge. Um, let me just move this up so you can see my notes. Um, so you've got relentless as an adjective, pinioned as a verb, uh, forced as a verb, 
And I've just noted that it really tells us that the ghost is, has got strength um, and he's determined um, and he's not going to give up on Scrooge. So in this sense, the ghost almost, you know, represents hope. Um, and, you know, it's quite a Christian sort of ideal as well that, you know, God doesn't give up on you um, and, and sort of is, is, wants the best for everybody, um, despite um, Scrooge being um, quite an unkind person. OK, so they're going to go to another memory here. So let's just separate that off. And this is going to be him seeing his fiance Belle is now married to someone else. They were in another scene and place, a room not very large or handsome, but full of comfort. 